you don't like the style of having too many things in the background, I'm using a very expensive lens to blur that, blur that out. So if you don't have the ability to do that, once we get to the camera and lens discussion, make sure you just keep it really simple. Usually darker backgrounds are better because you really pop out and I'll show you how to light yourself in a way like this where you pop out from the back is you wanna put one over here at a 45 degree angle, that's called your key light. And you wanna put another light at another 45 degree angle, that's called your fill light. My name is Saj Adibs, the founder of Hafenedi.com, and I'm making this video exclusive for the Internet Moguls of the World School. Thanks to Avi Arya for inviting me to share my work. I'm happy to be a creator partner for the Internet Moguls of the World School. Let's get started. Hey everyone, in today's video, I wanna show you exactly how to set up a YouTube studio completely from scratch. And I wanna show you just a spare bedroom here that I've turned into a YouTube studio. Everything from the furniture to the equipment, and to make it easier for you, I've also put together a list, just a document that you could get for free that shows you everything that I'm mentioning in this video, including links to where to find more information or even where to buy it. And I hope that could save you some time in your research. Now, I've set up multiple YouTube studios. I have monetized and grown multiple YouTube channels, including one that has almost 400,000 subscribers and 100 million views. And I also consult with other companies and businesses to help set up their YouTube channels and individuals as well. And I'll start here with my usual setup here on the other side of the room, and I've laid this out in seven very easy to follow steps for you. So let's get started with step number one, and that is picking a space that is quiet enough for you to create a YouTube studio from scratch, right? Because if you're in a noisy room, or if you're in your living room and there's activity in the background, that's not gonna work. So a lot of people skip this step and then constantly get interrupted by noise. I'm even creating a soundproof studio and sometimes for businesses, I design it from scratch, meaning I build out the walls and soundproof it. But if you're just doing this with the bedroom, I'll show you some stuff that's called sound treatment and that is removing echoes and things like that with some of the things you see in this room. And I'll cover that shortly in a different step. But right now, what you need to worry about is, is the room noisy? Are you hearing constant noise from the outside? Are people yelling? Are your neighbors noisy? Sit down, listen, and see if that level is acceptable. If it is, then we could go to the next step. If it's not, you need to find a different space. Now, step two is figuring out what background looks the best. And once we look at lenses and cameras and things like that, you could get this kind of effect that I have where the background is nice and blurry. But right now, what you really wanna focus on is, is your background too distracting or is it simple enough that people are paying attention to you? The key with YouTube is it's all about you and you looking at the camera and telling your audience something useful or entertaining. If the background is distracting and it takes away from that, you need to figure out a different setup. Now, this background I don't usually use. I wanted to just kind of show you, but you could also set up your room, which the way I've set it up is I could take advantage of three different backgrounds. So I've laid it out where this could be a background if I wanted to, the one you saw previous is my background. I could shoot from the other side of the room looking at the computer and that could be my background too. And for this setup, I've also framed in my computer here over my shoulder because a lot of times I have things on the computer that are referred to and I do a lot of screen capture videos, right? So that makes sense for my setup and the way I've set this up, right? I have cameras in the background. I have things that are related to what I'm talking about. I teach YouTube, so I have my YouTube plaque on the wall. So think of your channel and what you're talking about and try to design your background in a way it makes sense. Now, if you don't like the style of having too many things in the background, I'm using a very expensive lens to blur that, blur that out. So if you don't have the ability to do that, once we get to the camera and lens discussion, make sure you just keep it really simple. Usually darker backgrounds are better because you really pop out and I'll show you how to light yourself in a way like this where you pop out from the background. Now, step three is choosing a good camera and a good lens, okay? And as I mentioned in the beginning, I wanna show you what I'm using but then I really wanna show you a budget option for beginners that is a lot more affordable, right? Because I've been doing this for five years and I've really upgraded my gear. So this is not really affordable for most people starting a YouTube channel. And typically when you buy a camera like this, the lens 
is kind of a separate purchase. Just to give you an example, this camera is called Sony a7S III and this is a lens, a 24 to 105 lens. I'm using pre pretty identical camera over there with a little bit of a wider lens. But if you're just starting out, I recommend the, one of the cheaper version of this camera. It still has almost the same quality and you could really do a lot with it, but it's less than half the price of this camera. And I recommend a very budget lens that is far cheaper than this lens, about a quarter of the price. So make sure you refer to the document that I'm updating so then it's a lot easier for you to see what the latest and greatest is because I'm always upgrading that document. Step four is using a good quality microphone. Okay, so when you get started, microphones could be very shockingly expensive. Okay, but I started with about a hundred or so dollar microphone that I used in the shot. You could see another microphone I have back here called Shure MV7 that I use from time to time when I'm talking directly on a screen capture or like a zoom recording. But now I've upgraded over time to a Sennheiser microphone that I'm wearing. This is called a lavalier microphone. And what's great about this microphone is it's wireless and it goes directly into this camera. So right now I'm recording the audio from this lavalier mic into this camera. And then I have another microphone that's above me that I use from time to time when I'm talking directly to this camera and this is going directly to that camera. But if you use the microphone that's a USB microphone you can have on camera, start with that and over time you could upgrade. And all the different tier microphones that I'm mentioning here are listed on that document. Now this step is related to treating your room for sound, right? So you pick the quiet room, that was our very first step. But unless you're using a very expensive mic like a lavalier mic, you're gonna have a good amount of echo in just about every room. So the few things you could do about that is you could put carpet down if it's not carpet. You could also put a large area rug, cover as much of the ground as possible. You could also do something with the walls and the ceiling. If you see behind me, you see those panels I have? Now I have it more for a decorative reason because I have an expensive mic and it takes care of a lot of the echo for me. But I still have a decent amount of echo because I'm not using enough of those. So cover your wall with as many of those panels as you could find and they're about 12 inches by 12 inches and you could use kind of like sticky tape to put it on the wall. So I've put it, a lot of them on the wall and I've upgraded to more expensive panels that do a better job. But those are a really good starter option because you could buy them in a big bundle from pretty much any website, but I do have an Amazon link to those in the documents. And another thing you could do is on my main set, the direction that I'm talking, I put this thing called a sound blanket. It's like moving furniture blanket, but they call it sound blanket if you buy it from a video store. And basically with that, because I'm talking in that direction, it bounces off the sound blanket and it muffles the noise from reverbing back and hitting all the walls. That's what's causing echoes in a lot of YouTube videos. So having good sound is critical, right? So we worked on the microphone and we're gonna upgrade that over time as we get bigger on YouTube. But what we really care about right now is trying to get that level of echo out of our videos by doing this thing called sound treatment. And step six is setting up lighting because lighting makes or breaks our YouTube videos, right? So one of the easiest way to light a YouTube video is by using two very basic and simple lights that are pretty affordable for most people starting a YouTube channel. Because with lighting, basically, one doesn't quite do it justice the way you need your videos to look professional. Because with one, it's gonna look very directional. And I shoot commercial work for a living, so I've light pe I light people for a living all the time. What you wanna do with the light is you wanna put one over here at a 45 degree angle, that's called your key light, and you wanna put another light at another 45 degree angle, that's called your fill light. In this setup, I'm only using one light, right? So you see the shadows over here. I like that from time to time. So I kind of like this look of just having one light. So to give you an idea of what a one light setup looks like, this is exactly what it looks like. This is just one light hitting me. The background is my other setup and there's no fill light coming from this direction to fill in those shadows. And this is that light. I just grabbed it from the other set and this light you could buy in a two pack and it comes with a light stand and I bought this little diffusion panel to kind of soften it up because it's a little bit harsh on your face if you don't put something like this, like a softbox in front of it. But that's basically it. Two of these get you started. 
Now I have much more higher end lights, but again, I've upgraded over time. I started with lights that look just like this one. And now we're on to number seven. Now that you've completely set up your YouTube studio, you need to worry about how to edit those videos. So I have a Mac here. You could obviously use a PC to edit your videos, but I always recommend people that are starting to learn a editing software. I always recommend Adobe Premiere Pro or DaVinci Resolve. And I do have training on YouTube on both. You could search those and find those training videos completely for free. And with those, you could really do advanced editing. It's okay for beginners, but why I recommend these is you could grow with those. Make sure you refer to the document that has everything listed for you, including all the accessories, right? Because sometimes you need a tripod to set up your camera, I didn't mention, you need memory cards. You need some few things that are small that go with the bigger things that I mentioned, but it's all nice and organized in that document for you. Now, if you wanna learn the exact same formula that I've used to grow multiple YouTube channels and monetize them and use them for my business, including one of my channels reaching 400,000 subscribers at the time of this recording, I do have a complete training on that that I'll make sure I include below in the description as well so you can completely master YouTube, monetize YouTube, and use YouTube to grow any business. I hope you enjoyed this video that we did for the internet moguls of the world. Again, my name is Sajid Deebs, the founder of Hafenity.com, and I hope to catch you around on the next video.